So I have this new heater and I think I'm gonna test it out before I take it on the road. It's 400 watts. I found this at Walmart. It's just a mainstays personal heater. It's supposed to be small, but it also has this base on it. And currently the heater that I have in my van does not have a base. So it has to be plugged into a power station and then it just kind of hangs on to it. But this one I could move to a lot of places. So will this work? Best way to find out is to unbox it and then use it for a little bit to see how well it works. And I think I have the perfect place to do this. And then I'll do my next set of tests actually on a power station, I think. But for now, I'm going to test this in a small room to see if it heats up the room. This is a nice little heater. It's wrapped up pretty well. The cord part is in plastic. So off this goes. And now I get to explore the heater a little bit more. I picked this up in blue, but it comes in black and white and a couple other colors has an on off switch on the side and then it just plugs into my shore power or into a power station and then it has this nice firm base meaning it can be moved around so i think this is going to be really good but i'm going to check it out and test it in a small room that i can close off so I'm taking it to my bathroom. It's winter here in Texas, so it's a perfect time to check this out. And I think that this is going to allow me to see if it's going to actually work in a space that's also small. The bathroom's a little bit larger than my van. So if it can heat the bathroom, I know it can heat my van. I have 30 square feet of space in my van to use. So the bathroom itself is, again, a little bit larger and also taller, but if this can make even the slightest bit of difference, this will be good and I'll take it with me on the road as I prepare to travel for some things that I have coming up. I'm very excited though because it is getting down to the wire of when I depart for that adventure and oh it's gonna be so fun. Okay so I plugged it in and now it's the time to turn it on and well, it's starting to crank out some heat. I hope it works. I hope it works. This is a smaller heater, which you could use it like an office or under a desk. And I've used heaters like this before, but not one in my van. So again, if it can heat this room, which is obviously much larger, then it will work in my small space. And this will give me options as to where I can place it in different positions whenever I'm using my shore power, which should address some of my concerns that I had with the handy heater. Now I did notice something pretty cool that I wanna share before I give it a couple hours to do its thing. This actually has a tip over shut off. So it's nice and cozy right now. You can see the light is on, but if this thing were to fall over, it turns off. That's awesome. So listen to it really carefully and you can hear it. Okay, while we're giving it a little bit to heat up in there, I kind of wanted to go through some of the specs of this. This is a cool touch exterior. It has the tip over and overheat protection. It has a 72 inch cord and it's portable. So here it tells you how it works. Then it says that the air is warmed as it passes over the ceramics, which it shows you kind of where that is. And then the key benefits to this are ranked by stars. So good, better, and best. And so quick heat, it says it's the best. It also says that it's the best at active family homes because of that tip over. So that's kind of cool. But the things that it only ranks good on are the quiet heat and also heats with minimal humidity loss. So, okay, that, that's still fine for van life. I'm not really upset about that one. This also has a one year limited warranty on it. So that's kind of interesting also. So all in all, not too bad. This was super inexpensive. It's one of the least expensive ones that they have at Walmart. And as you can see, it's in both English and Spanish. So that's pretty basic information there. So now we're just waiting for it to heat up and then we'll do some more testing. I always recommend testing any kind of item that you have that you're putting in your van in a place where you can have a more controlled environment before putting it in the van so you don't lug it around if it doesn't work out. And so since I am back at base camp before heading out again, I thought this was a great time to do this and uh, to kind of prepare myself for winter. I also liked this one because it's smaller so it can fit in a more compact space or up in my roof box if I continue traveling and then suddenly it gets warm. I can just throw it up there so it's out of the way and it not be that big of a deal. I'm probably going to get it 
a little something to put it in though so I don't end up getting dust inside that like ceramic grate area so that if I do put it in storage mode while I'm in my van and then I need to get it out later on it doesn't have that super burnt smell that happens sometimes when you pack away a heater for the season so um, if this works out I'll be looking for one of those otherwise I'll just use this around the house to make sure that my pipes stay nice and cozy and uh, with all of the wintry weather don't get too cold okay I haven't given it quite two hours but I gave it enough time so I could come in here and feel the difference. This door right here, when I opened it up, I could feel the warmth come out. It wasn't like a ton of warmth like piling out, but it was definitely warmer in here than it was in there. So that is great. That means it's working. So this might actually work out in my van. So now it's time for me to do the hard work, which is to check it out with power station and stuff like that so that I can uh, get a better understanding of how much this is actually going to pull. It said 400 watts. Now 400 watts, that's the same as my handy heater. So now I get to see how long it can last. Taking a closer look at the bottom side, and this is the little tip over point. It's a little white piece at the bottom. If that comes and tips over and loses pressure on it, that's what shuts it off. Okay, I searched everywhere for a fully charged power station, and I've been using these kind of around the house. So this one's at 56%. So I think what I'm going to do is just take note of where it is and then run it for a while and see how much it goes down. So I'm going to start off by turning on the AC and then plugging it in. Okay, it is currently plugged in, and as you can see, this is more than 400 watts. That is pulling 500 watts to start off with but then it goes down. So you would not be able to use this heater on a 500 watt power station because it exceeds 500 watts for the surge of coming on in the first place, but it does regulate down. And so that's typically how things work whenever it says that they have surge watts. So normally whenever you plug in anything, it has to plug in, turn on, push it to capacity, and then it pulls it back. And so anytime that you see that something is 400 watts, typically it's going to be more than that needed to get it going. So if you're looking at a power station, you need something that's going to be in excess of the surge watts, not necessarily the watts that it typically runs at. And a lot of devices do have that written on the box. In fact, this one did. In fact, right here, you see it says 400 and 450. This one actually is not rated correctly because that definitely went over 500 on this. So sometimes the box can be a little bit deceiving on certain things. So what I typically do is if I see something that says 400, I just assume that I'm going to need a thousand watt power station. I'm going to assume that unless I test it on a power station first. This is where it comes in handy if you can test things ahead of time. So for example, if you turn something on and it does not turn on, that's because the surge watts are in excess of what you have power for. And um, so that's kind of how it works. I have a few devices that I've tried out, including that little handy heater on some different power stations, and it would not work on some of them because it was just too much. Um, in fact, one of my 500 watt power stations, I plugged it in and because the surge watts are over 500, it turned on and turned immediately off. And I was like, okay, cool. That's how I learned my lesson. So that's kind of a tip for you guys. A lot of times, again, if you can test it before you get it out on the road, that's super handy. And if you don't have a power station and are banking what kind of power station you need on the devices that you want to power, if you have a friend who has a power station, see if it'll work on theirs. It's so much easier to do something like that rather than purchasing something and not being able to use it because it just didn't work. Heaters are kind of one of those things that they typically have a higher surge watt than a lower one. Does that make sense? So again, we started off at like 56%. We're already down to 54%. So I am going to start the timer now from 54% and uh, see how long it takes us to get it down just a little bit. I'm gonna set the timer for about an hour. So timer, 60 minutes, and it should start counting down. Now again, this is the Jackery Explorer 1000. I have had this power station the longest of all of my power stations, and this thing is a beast. It does a lot of things for me. However, what you're gonna notice is quickly, this is going to start dropping because this is a lot of watts to be coming out of this guy right here. And so 371 watts. I'm assuming if this would have been fully charged, I could probably get about 
uh, two and a half hours of continuous use on this guy because again, heat pulls quickly. That's the problem with doing business with heat in a van using power stations. It's much easier to heat a van if you have a diesel heater or if you have continuous power coming from a pole or if you have a battery bank that's a larger battery bank, but heat sucks down the power. Any kind of device that uses heat, electric kettles, heaters, even like your hair dryers, they pull a lot and fast. And so this is one of the things that I've learned. So typically what I do is I use heaters as supplemental heat whenever I only have my power stations to use. And then I can use them as more continuous heat whenever I have shore power. So that's why I wanted this guy so that I could use it whenever I'm using shore power mostly. Now, is that going to address the issue with me being cold at night? No, but I have an electric blanket and actually I have something else that I'm gonna be trying out also before I leave base camp that is another kind of electric blanket that might be a little bit more efficient and it has controls on it. So I'll be showing you that later on. But um, for now, we're gonna finish out this test and see what happens. Dropped another percentage, pulling about a constant 370 watts at this point. Okay, so as you can see, the time is still ticking down, but in less than an hour, this tiny heater took the 50 little bit plus percent of the Jackery and killed it. So it's at 0% now. So this is definitely something that I would want to use with shore power or as a spot heater, but not for heating all night just using a power station. I needed to test it to find out, and now that I know, that's good information to have. Again, with my handy heater, I only use it for a few minutes at a time, and I heat up my space, and then I kind of get under my covers, and I cozy up, and I'm, I'm good to go. But I know heaters take a lot of power, and so I kind of expected this to happen. I just thought it would last a little bit over an hour with over 50%. So my original estimation of two and a half hours would be closer to probably two hours, realistically, if this was fully charged. That's what I needed to know. So with that, I will be putting this in my van and I'll definitely be using it if I have shore power because I can move it into a different position. But um, that'll solve the issue of not having to run power into a power station then directly out of the power station for the heat again. Because before what I was having to do is to run the handy heater, I couldn't leave that standing up like this one. So like this one's freestanding. So I could move it to different places in my van. I could put it on several different surfaces. I could maneuver it because of the length of the cord. That will work great. But the handy heater was just basically like this unit with a plug on it. So I would have to use it directly on a power station because I couldn't plug it into a cord inside and then place it somewhere. So this one I can. So I do not have to plug into a power station to use this if I am plugged into shore power. I can just run this from my shore power plug and then move it to where I need it to be. So that's a big win. However, if I was in a situation where I was not on shore power and I did need to put this or the other one onto a power station, I would just be able to use it for spot here and there to heat up the place if I needed to use the restroom or something like that. So do heaters work in vans? Yes. Do heaters work consistently like diesel heaters? No, they don't. Is this a good one though? I think this one is, it definitely is. It heated up this area in here and this is a larger space. It's not like hot by any means, but it's definitely warmer than it was. And so that's really good. And I think with the flexibility of the length of the cord, that's gonna be awesome. Let, let me just show you how long this cord is. This cord is, is super long. This is like the length of my van almost. <laughs> so I could easily take this directly from the shore power plug and then take it up to like where I currently have my shelf, which after I put in my other shelving unit will not be the case, but I could stretch it all that distance and have it in a good place so it's not right beside like my linens in my bed. Now on the top of this, it does have a thing saying, try to keep things three feet away from the front facing surface. And let's just be honest, all heaters have that warning and in vans, that's usually not a possibility. However, when I'm in couch mode, that can definitely happen. So 
I will be very cautiously using this, mostly whenever I have the shore power. If I have more than one power station and I happen to be in a pinch where I'm stuck somewhere, this could come in handy for being able to maintain a little bit more heat in the van if it's like super, super cold. But I wanted to test this out though to see, because again, this is something you can find at Walmart. Everyone can have access to something like this. And if you have unlimited power, it's great. If you don't have unlimited power though, this is something that you might want to consider for just here and there or getting it warm for toilet time and things like that. So um, all in all, is this a winner? I think it is. It's consistently been running. This little thing right here is awesome. I love the tip over, but um, yeah, I think this was a good purchase. Remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. And that good time doesn't have to be cold. Sometimes you can do something like this and get yourself to a nice little cozy place and then tuck in for the night under a warm electric blanket. Till next time guys, bye.